Welcome back, everybody. Rudy with Alpha Investments. You know, this is an interesting topic. One of the ideas here, and one of these topics I've had on my uh, my video idea list for a while now, and I kind of track it and everything, and this is one I've been wanting to get to for a while. And that is, um, Rudy, how come in Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, sports cards, like, well, let's pick on Pokemon. How come in Pokemon, it's okay for people to buy a new box of the new Pokemon set, open it up, and they'll take all the full arts, the hollow foils, all these things, and they will actually send them out for grading. And there's actually a market, and like people will pay a premium to get like PSA 10s of the new full art hollow foils. Or PSA 9s are still a little bit over regular raw price, but I don't understand that. Um, and how come in Magic, nobody's opening Core 20, War of the Spark, Modern Horizons, Throne of the Drano. Nobody's saying, oh yeah, I opened Throne of El Drain, Rudy, I got a full art foil box topper, I'm going to send it off to PSA, or I guess for, Ma for Magic, Beckett. Um, and of course, you know, Pokemon is just strictly PSA for some reason. Um, so and why, don't, why is anybody doing that? What's the deal with that kind of situation? Why does Magic, unlike even, even in the sports card world, people will buy a $1,000 rare box of baseball cards with one golden pack in it, and they'll just send it all off for grading. And that's very normal and very accepted in all of the, the hobbies. But why in Magic the Gathering does it not matter unless it's an old school reserve list single? Now again, there are people out there that grade all the box toppers. They try to collect a set of PSA 10 box toppers or Beckett 9.5 and above box toppers. You know, and this same thing with judge promos and foils and certain subcategories. But overall, the market as an entirety doesn't quite accept or really like the idea or buy into the concept that, well, grading new Magic cards is a Timmy stupid thing to do. That is the overall consensus of the entire market. There, there's not really any, I don't know, there, there's no one that says, oh my god, Rudy, I opened the new, I opened War of the Spark and I got the Mythic Planeswalker in foil and I'm going to send it off for Grady and sell it for $10,000. Like, that just doesn't exist. But why is that? That, that is such an interesting question. Now, I don't have an actual answer to it, but in my opinion, if I had to really kind of think about the variables that are involved here, I'm going to go with this. I think with Pokemon, you're attracting a more, and I know I could get bashed in the comments for this, but I, I feel like overall the majority of Pokemon players are more of a younger amateur collector and a player. I don't think Pokemon, I think the Pokemon market for investors and high-end people like that with larger, or the whales as Wizard calls them now, this product's not for you type thing. I think the whales tend to drift in the gaming industry, they drift to magic. Because that's like the, the ultimate chess game for the whales. Now don't get me wrong, there's a lot, there are whales in Pokemon, I'm not going to downplay that. But I don't think there's as many as in magic because i personally know quite a bit of people that i've communicated with over the years that just have tremendous seven eight figure collections similar to me but just are very whoa i mean like that's impressive like i've been dealing with this crap for 20 years and like i see that picture of your collection even i'm just like it takes my breath away i'm just like holy oh my god what do i need to do do i take you out for one like, like literally i mean there's still a lot of things like that that's still just you know i see those pictures and i'm just like oh god that like it just does that to me and I don't know if there's that many people at that financial level in the Pokemon world. Or even the Yu-Gi-Oh! Or even like White Swartz or the Buddy Fights or Final Fantasy. And all the, I mean, Keyforge, is that, is that still a thing? You don't know what I'm talking about? Keyforge was a big thing a while back ago? No? Okay, you're just looking at me? Okay, now you're just going to take your, okay. You know, that, that's, that's so when we look at the grading, like, a, like let's just focus on grading cards. Not PSA versus BGS or Beckett. Just overall... When you look at the great ability, I truly just don't think the big money cares about grading something new because of the consensus of the higher print runs and the lack of long-term growth and just credibility on the singles market. Because like we talk about on this channel many times, this sealed pro all of this sealed product can be converted to singles, but you can't put it back into sealed product. I mean, you can try and try to reseal and counterfeit and shady stuff, but overall... Any really legitimate store who's been in the industry a long time is going to catch you. They're going to figure it out. There's not a good way to really get away with it. 
especially in today's day and age, the seals, the logo, the bun, it's just extraordinarily difficult to actually reseal and get away with it on a large scale. So when you really think about that, I just don't think magic's ever going to go in a direction that's going to accept new cards being graded. I just, I, I think the attitude, the angle, the slant, the tilt of just the negativity on long-term value on singles of new product, and based on Wizards' direction, I just don't think grading anything new. And when I say anything new, I mean pretty much, in my opinion, as you guys know, for those of you who've been around the channel for many years now, I still stand by all graded cards should be pretty much either a reserve list card or something very old or very unique. Like, for example, if it's not 93, 94, Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, I guess even Revised Dual Lands, and maybe a lot of the other Revised cards as we start to see. And then, of course, you've got the main, main Four Horsemen of Arabian Antiquities, Legends, and, of course, some of the Dark. And then, of course, you get some other little side promo specialty things. Maybe some really rare, a really rare Judge promo or a variant or some sort of APAC specialty land or a Guru. or Unless it's some sort of very unique card... Uh, besides that, there's just not... I mean, now, there are some exceptions. Like, if you look at, like, the Urza's block, Urza's Legacy Destiny type thing, if you have a foil Grim Monolith, and you can actually get a PSA 10, which is extraordinarily difficult because of how foiling ages on those cards with the cloudiness and the, just the surface. And if you can actually pull that off, whew, man, I mean, see, something like that is so tough and so rare, it, you will still have the premium. But, see, these are little exceptions. These are little outliers. I overall do believe, and I don't think it's going to change, is that I just don't think anything being made today is worthy of being graded. It's not worth the time. Because you can't, you got to remember, everybody, in 2019, Beckett and PSA are so backlogged on regular grading. If you want to just submit a thousand cards for grading and get like the $5 per card bulk rate, it's going to take one to two years to get your cards back. And I don't know about you, but that's, that's an absolute 100% full stop no. That, that is a full no. So, I mean, you're going to have to pay. Usually, if I'm going to do grading, which I'm actually getting ready to send off my first batch of graded cards in years, I would do like a 100-card batch, and I would do like the 20-day or the 5-day turnaround, so you're paying like $20, $30 a card versus trying to get like $5, $10 a card. Just pay, but you know, submit only high-end cards that are worthy of the, you know, if you submit a $50 card and you're paying 20 bucks, what are you doing? If you pay 20 bucks to get the card graded or 30 bucks to get it graded, that's a thousand dollar card. It's only two, three percent by ratio. So you have to look at that. Um, but I mean, back to the overall mindset, I truly just believe it's because the people who are really big whales in the world of magic, they don't want the new cards. They don't believe in the longevity of the financial value of the new singles on a big investment scale. It's just not there. We all know no matter what happens, in 10, 20 years from now, a Black Lotus is going to continue. It's not going to be worth less than what it is today. We all know in 10 to 20 years from now, no matter what anyone in negativity, magic's dying and already died 10 times over, popped up from the grave, Rudy's not going to have any hair, I'm going to be curled over with a walker. We all know that pretty much in 20 years from now, the price of a dual land is not going to be $100 for a plateau or $75 or $50 for a played one. It's not going to be three, dollars $400 for underground sea in 20 years. It's just not going to happen. So we all know that. That's kind of a generally accepted concept across the board. But when you look at this whole thing with the new stuff, and a lot of you out there, you know, and I get this all the time, I get tremendous amount of contacts every day. On a normal day, I honestly get around, I'd, I'd say about 10 to 15 contacts a day to buy a collection on a normal day. So let's just say 10. Out of those 10, you know, unless it's vintage or something very special to your old, I'm not really looking to accumulate a lot of those single cards because I don't have the time to do the singles on eBay or meet a lot of people locally at the store and do the... I just don't have the logistics in place to handle a lot of the smaller transactions anymore. But I, I just, you know, when I look at these, and a lot of people in these collections are, you know, they have the, the Timmy collection of all the Ravnica's and the War of the Spark. They have all kinds of, you know... Uh, you know, maybe a full set of box toppers from Ultimate Masters. A lot of neat cards that just, I just can't do anything with it, you know? And it is what it is. And those are usually really tough conversations because 
you know, to tell someone, like, look, and, and a lot of times, like, hey, I want to be on the channel. I want my collection to be, like, immortalized on YouTube forever and share it. I said, look, I respect that. That's cool. It's fun to do. We all get to share and talk about it. You get to see everybody in the comment section go crazy. But, you know, it, you, can, you can tell a big difference between someone who's maybe put a lot of money in Popper and has a major Popper collection or just a major collection of specialty things, which is, you know, all the Timmy boxes and the, the special Hasbro, Hascon products and maybe the new My Pony collection thing. You know, and unfortunately, these products just are the San Diego Comic Con exclusives, you know. And it's just, they're tough conversations because long term, you know, uh, the Timmy box from a Ravnica or a Guilds or Allegiance or War or the, you know, it, it, those things are not going to be $10,000 a piece. You know, they are marketed as limited special and they're not going to be there. And the same thing, and unfortunately other people say, Rudy, I'm going to buy all these new cards and I'm going to take them out of packs with gloves like open boosters and then I'm going to, I'm going to send them all off for grading and try to get like Beckett 9.5s and PSA 10s of all the foils and all the mythics. And I'm like, dude, I, I just don't remember. You know, a sealed product, even though I love a sealed product of Modern Horizons, you know, I, I don't recommend anybody, you know, crack thousands of dollars in Modern Horizons, take all the singles and send them off for grading. Just don't do that. Because the odds of you turning a profit and waiting long term, the odds are low. And that's really what all this comes down to, everybody. When you make any form of investment in this stuff, it's not about whether or not the card is going to go up in value. It's about the probability of it, the risk level. And that's why I talk about that a lot. Because any form of money manager, hedge fund, financial analyst, anyone who does you know, the CFA type of approach. And they're, maybe they're auditing, you know, SEC quarterly, uh, you know, the filings or the 10Ks and Qs and 8Ks and Qs. And maybe they're looking through these reports. And, you know, their job is to look for anomalies or look for things that may be better or worse than expected. That's what those people do. And for me, that's what I do in the world of magic. We don't have quarterly reports and SEC Securities Exchange Commission filings because we're not regulated. This is literally just a wild west in the world of cardboard because the real world who doesn't know anything about magic, literally just thinks all this stuff is hilarious, which makes a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful playground. And so that, that's kind of my mindset. So I think overall, to sum up this video, everybody, a combination, number one, I just don't think the whales, which have the money to invest and have the strong hands to hold the position long term, I don't think the whales are into or actually generally accept it. They reject it. They just don't believe the concept of long-term singles that are new hold value. And when I say hold value, I, I don't mean they're not going to be worthless. But I mean, actually, when I, uh, that's probably a bad choice. When I say hold value, I mean they have like a nice 5 to 10% annual return. I just don't see that. And I don't think most whales who are handling a lot of money are ever going to buy into that concept. Where as the same, I mean, boxes of Modern Horizons. Look, I'm standing next to them. With some other old dual decks and all kinds of weird things. But in this particular area here, I don't know what the singles in Modern Horizons are going to be. I don't know what the singles in Conspiracy 1, 2, Battle Bond, Dominator. I don't know what the single prices are going to be. But what I can tell everybody is in five years from now, Modern Horizon boxes are probably not going to be $189 on eBay. In five years from now, I highly, the probability of them being $190 in five years is extremely low. And I like those odds. And that's how I make my decisions, based on probabilities in the teeter-totter of risk. I don't think Modern Horizons in five years is going to be a $500 booster box. But I can tell you one thing. I bet it's going to be probably about $300. That's my instinct. So, I mean, to me, that's great. It maybe happens in one or two years, or maybe it happens in five years. But the point is, the, the downside risk of me getting cut up by a falling knife scenario is very minimal. Which makes me very attracted to engaging in that position. So when we go back to the final concept, number one, I told you, the whales really reject the concept. Number two, I generally just think the money is not there based on Wizards' direction. The fact we are officially in the era, and I've talked to everybody about this, for those of you who have been watching me for a while, we are in the era where it's all about flashy stuff, okay, at any cost. Alternates, variants, ex extended arts. And I'm telling you, I do believe in the next five to ten years, maybe sooner, we're going to hit to a point where it's going to be super lottery cards or numbered cards like the sports industry. It's going to happen at least one time, and they're going to test the waters. 
And it's going to be a heck of a day, everybody. So I, based on Wizards' direction, this is my number two point. I just don't think they are allowing the confidence to build and the value of the cards to accrue any form of strong value to make people comfortable with doing this. So between those first two main things right there, before I get to the third one, that alone is enough risk and downside and uncertainty and questions that I don't know why anybody would want to spend thousands of dollars to grade the Timmy boxes or grade full arts or box toppers. I mean, I love the cards. They're beautiful. I mean, that's what, I mean, I don't care how much we all hate the price of the throne golden boxes. You know there's more of them going to come with all the future sets. I don't think it's going to impact the value of the sealed boxes, but it also, we all know that the single cards, and there's more variants in the future Theros and Battle for Zendikar is going to have all, not Battle for Zend Zendikar, whatever, in the new Theros. There's going to be wild stuff and variants and specialty expensive products. It's coming. It's going to happen. You know, but no matter how much we dislike the price, we all agree on one thing. The throne collector's cards in the, the fairy tale story book frame or whatever, whatever frame you want to call it, they're beautiful. They are absolutely stunning. It may be my favorite, literally, visual eye appeal of a card besides maybe the masterpieces and the original expeditions. They're gorgeous, everybody. Everybody agrees on that. We just don't agree on the expensive prices because Wizards knows they can get away with it and we're all going to throw our money at it because we're suckers. We all are. So, now when we get to the third and final thing, I, I just don't think the majority of people who open the boxes and the Timmy boxes and handle these single cards want to grade those cards. Because they simply just say, why? I want to play the people who handle most of these newer things in the world of Magic. They just play the game, and they don't care. They don't like evil investors and 3% ladies like me. They just don't like that stuff. Yes, I said 3% ladies like me. Just to see if anyone's listening. Where are we at? 18, 20 minutes in the video? 17 minutes, something like that. You know, I, I just genuinely think the people handling the cards and have them in decks and cracking boxes, they just don't care. And if they don't care, there's not going to be a rush for them to open a pack and say, Wow! A full art Garouk! Nobody touch it. I gotta send it to Beckett and pay $100 overnight express and get it back. Okay, he does that. And it comes back a 9.5 or something. Okay, so his Garouk is now worth 30 bucks more, 40 bucks more, and he spent $100. I mean, I don't... There, it's just not there. So when you factor in pretty much the whales reject it, Wizards' direction of flashy things, and then the overall players just don't care. I don't ever see an era or a time where magic is going to shift where you know, grading the new stuff is ever going to be worth it. And I, I just don't see it happening, everybody. And now again, Wizards of the Coast is very unpredictable. They are a major... Un Wizards of the Coast is like a giant amoeba. They're very unpredictable. They change shape. They're super volatile. You don't, you don't know what they're going to do. But so, I mean, things could change. But based on the current environment, it's 100% full stop no. It, it's, there's just nothing there. And again, if you're going to take that kind of approach and spend that kind of money and you're looking to make a lot of money and flip cards and invest long term, why are you taking that kind of risk? What are you looking to gain from it? You're trying to make money? And you're, you're trying to throw the dice at the craps table? You're literally gambling in a casino with wizards on these new cards and grading and injecting all this extra cost. And the teeter-totter is slanted against you. Why? So that, that when you really look at all that, that's kind of my... My overall consensus, everybody, that's kind of this topic. I wanted to make a video on it. I thought it was a really good breakdown conversation. And um, I just, you know, final thought, everybody, I just don't recommend it. Um, I, I truly just don't recommend anybody spend money and do that. If you're going to go bigger money and you want to put it into magic because, you know, maybe your life is doing good, your financial situation is improving, you're saving money, you got to, you maybe move, you got a nice stable household, house or something, and you know, your job's going good, you know, and, there's, and you already have a retirement account, you've got a nice stable place to live. There's nothing wrong with branching out. But overall, I, I just don't see it with this direction. So, that's all I have for anybody who listened to the whole video. Um, I don't know, lar large hole Phyrexian flop taco inside the back of your face. I don't know. Have a good day.